Listen to the words of the risen Christ. Peace be with you. Come and see his hands and the wound in his side. Hello and welcome to this new series of daily devotionals that we called The Road to Easter, exploring the events of what is called Holy Week. Uh, there is a subgenre of films I quite enjoy called survival dramas. These movies depict people battling against the odds to stay alive despite desperate conditions, aggressive threats, unknown terrain and dwindling resources. One example of this is the film Everest, based on the events of an ill-fated 1996 attempt at the summit. It includes the remarkable story of Dr. Beck Weathers, an American pathologist who was left for dead on the mountain on a discouraging three separate occasions. Exposed to severe ice, cold and wind and having spent 15 hours in a hypothermic coma, Beck says at one point he saw his wife and children calling out to him. And with this in his heart and mind, he was somehow able to get himself to his feet, drag himself back down the mountain and back into base camp. His vision gave him somehow uh, hope. And when life is difficult, hope is powerful. Hope that our present problems will be temporary. Hope that our struggles may teach us something. Hope that better days may be ahead. Uh, at the beginning of Easter week, when Jesus arrived into Jerusalem for the start of the Jewish Passover festival, it was at a difficult time for its people. Under Roman occupation, the Jews would enjoy a degree of freedom, but life was tense and under a shadow. The secular Jewish historian Josephus portrays the Roman governor Pilate as a harsh and ruthless leader. There was some social, political and religious unrest, but also a sense of expectancy amongst some of the Jews that there might be real, a real and imminent God-ordained change brought about by the arrival of their Messiah. They believed that various Old Testament prophecies foretold of a time when God's anointed leader, a descendant of David, their greatest king, would arrive and take up immediate rule. The idea of the Messiah, one held by Jews throughout the ages, brought them a hope that their reality at that time, that of living under Roman occupation, could change. And it was in this context that Jesus of Nazareth enters the scene. According to Mark's Gospel, when Jesus rode into Jerusalem, the crowds exclaimed, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David! Hosanna in the highest heaven! Perhaps because hope is powerful, it can also be dangerous. Uh, one of the writers of the book of Proverbs states this, hope deferred makes the heart sick, but desire fulfilled is a tree of life. There is a theory that a potential reason why some of the crowd who were shouting Hosanna and hailing the arrival of Jesus into Jerusalem may have turned on him so quickly was due to their hope being disappointed. Throughout the four Gospels, uh, Jesus consistently refuses to live up to people's expectations of a rabbi or some of the typical expectations of the Messiah. And so it is in his final week. The crowds that welcomed Jesus into Jerusalem may have heard of some of the miraculous works that he was said to have done whilst in Galilee and the following he was able to attract they may have taken a particular understanding of what the Messiah would do from some of their scriptures. From these pieces, they may have built up a picture of who Jesus was and what Jesus would do for them that was not 
entirely correct. I wonder if I do the same. I wonder if because of this I could also experience the kind of disappointment that results from false or unfulfilled hopes. Jesus came into Jerusalem on a donkey, not a war horse. He was not that kind of saviour. Professor N.T. Wright, in his book Luke for Everyone, writes, As we arrive at Jerusalem with Jesus, the question presses upon us. Are we going along for the trip in the hope that Jesus will fulfil some of our hopes and desires? Are we ready to sing a psalm of praise, but only as long as Jesus seems to be doing what we want? It's an interesting question. Listen to the words of the risen Christ.